My first session, we had to come in and get changed into our blues kit and just coming out into the dome and just meeting everyone and seeing how many people were there and just like, just the whole experience, like being at a, like, a proper club, it was just like, it was just crazy. When it came to football, off the pitch, he was really quiet, but when he crossed that white line, he just changed into a, into a different person. Uh, his, his enthusiasm, his speed. Um, we talked before about how he was his box-to-box -box player, um, and he just enjoyed the game. And he was very particular in what he did. He made sure he did everything correct and everything right. And he was quite selfless, really. Because of George's nature, he is quite a quiet, calm individual. Um, I think we kind of followed that in a way and we kept it very grounded. Yes, we could see that he was talented, but it's important for him to keep his feet on the ground. So I started coaching George when he was under eight. Similar to JJ, great listener, great learner, and um, was always, always um, in the games. Work ethic was excellent, always going around making tackles, being brave on the ball. And those are my earliest memories of, of George, really. I just remember like, them always saying, just express yourself. So don't worry about like, making mistakes or anything. Just focus on like, what, like, just being the best player you can and enjoying it, really. Yeah. Did you feel like it was the right place for you here in terms of that? I mean, you've stayed, you've still yeah. around, so the coaches have, were good with you, I, I, I imagine? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was quite quiet, so like all the coaches would like would see that and like be a bit different with me, and that that really helped me like like come out of my comfort zone and express myself and yeah, be a bit more confident. So yeah, coming to Birmingham City was probably obviously it's the best thing he's ever done. To be fair. I think it's really, really brought out his uh, abilities and his strengths. And he's just gone from strength to strength. He's really grown. Good morning from uh, Pride Park, Derby. Welcome to match 12 of the 15 finals, which make up the ESFA PlayStation Schools Cup Festival. This is the competition for under 13 boys, but with a maximum of three players who attend FA-recognized academies or centers of excellence that can play in any match at any one time in the competition. The uh, two finalists are St. Bede's of uh, Redditch, about uh, 50 miles south of Birmingham in Worcestershire, who will play in blue and white stripes. The more you're at school, you played in one game that a certain Mr. Russell has told us about a yeah. school's cup final at Derby. Um, it was his team, his words, not mine. Um, <laughs> and he, he was really happy to have you as part of the team. What do you remember from the day and, and the game? Um, just turning up. I think it was one of my first times playing at like a stadium, so and then seeing all my, my school my schoolmates there and everything watching and just playing on the big pitch with all my mates. I mean, can't get much better than that. We absolutely chucking it down. I got really really wet, and I can just remember that we scored after about a minute or so, and that helped me calm down massively because it was in a game like that where it's so nervous and we got you know thousands of people watching. I think George hit a shot that hit the post and it came back out and Key and tapped it in. And George Hall is in here with an opportunity. It's the post, it's the other post and it's squeezed in by Hudson. Some beats lead inside 90 seconds. Just go 
scoring in as well was made it even better. So yeah, I can't believe we won it as well. So yeah. It was a decent hit as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was right was not a bad light on as well. Yeah. So after, after that winning, I think we all knew that they would win it. So I think just relief, but yeah, it was a great day. That looked as dangerous in the last 15, 20 minutes. And Hall is in here from Hodgson's pass and Hall blasts it into the roof of the net. It's the combination that started the game so well for St. Beats when George Hall's shot hit a post and Kean Hodson pounced. This time Hodson's the provider and Hall is the goal scorer. I called it a thumper, I think. And it, it's, it, you know, at that age, however good you are, and obviously the goalkeeper is in six foot five, mm -hmm. but to, to get it into the roof of the net, to hit it high. I mean, we see in penalty shootouts now the great penalty takers lift the ball okay not a not an easy height for a goalkeeper but in a, in an area where a goalkeeper simply cannot reach so at that age to be hitting uh, that kind of shot is quite something and why did it come back to me because of that research line that he is actually the youngest player in the team if you were looking as a little clue as to how his development was going compared to anybody else in the field then perhaps that goal and that fact we should have all probably seen it then. You know, that was just George all over. You could see that, you know, the rest of the team were getting tired and, you know, they could possibly have lost the game or had to take it to extra time or penalties. And so he just stepped up and, uh, you know, and that's what he's, he's about. He does what he needs to do at the right times and I'm really proud of him for doing that. The last six months, is, it's really kicked on for yeah. you, hasn't it? It's been a, a big time. Let's start with international football. First call yeah. up to England with the 18s yeah. I think last November, wasn't it? Um, how'd you get the call? What do they do? Um, I think my mum got an email, <laughs> and then I think it was after training at lunchtime, she called me and said, you're in the squad for you're going away to Spain with the under-18s. And oh, I couldn't really believe it at the time, because, I mean, playing for your country is just just another level of it. Yeah, they just call you and then have a chat with you and yeah, like explain everything and what's going to happen. Yeah, and then you got out there and played three yeah. games. What was the feeling the first time you pulled the England shirt on, you're walking out, yeah. national anthems, what, what are you thinking? I mean, it was it was an honour obviously like wearing it for the first time and um, like representing country, but obviously I was, I was a bit nervous, but <laughs> once again, it's like the same with my debut as well. As soon as you get onto the pitch, it's just you do what you've always been doing, prepared yourself for it, so. I'm kind of rarely speechless as a person, um, but that that's one of the most amazing moments for your child to play for England. Does it get any better than that, really? That, that was magical and um, I'm so I couldn't put my proudness into words really. Well let's get the all important lineups for this encounter. The first one of 2022 remember number 35 George Hall makes his first ever start as a blues player in any first team competition and replaces Chucks Anike who drops to the bench. First team debut, full first team debut as well, yeah. starting against QPR. Um, what do you remember about the day and, and how did you feel that time? The whole day I was just thinking about like my first touch and stuff, so so yeah, it was a, it was an unreal day as well. Did it feel like you're sort of watching yourself through someone else? You've watched so many games. Yeah. And I imagine watched the first team so many times at St Andrews too. That's you on the pitch. How did you find your focus? Um, it was, I don't know, it was just like playing with like players you've seen on the TV, like Troy and everyone, like it was just a bit, it was just a bit weird, but you gotta just zone out and like just focus on focus on what you gotta do and just do your best really. They take you through it and offer some advice and yeah, is definitely. there anyone in particular? I think Sunich and Gaza are in midfield yeah, right? yeah. chatting to you. Yeah, guys definitely helped, especially him being a midfielder as well, like with positioning not running about everywhere and <laughs> stuff but but yeah they really helped me like relax and stay cool and and yeah they helped me as well. It was a real special moment this year especially with some of the boys that have managed to get in and, and get that opportunity that's that's our win that that's our win as a, as a youth development coach um, yeah really really proud moment we you know we are really proud of all the boys that have, have had the opportunity and like I say we'll tr try our hardest to continue to 
to to do the best we can, run the best program we possibly can. And like I said, I, I generally believe there is a real pathway at this football club. And you know, young players that want to come here and play, like if you can work hard and and really showcase yourself, you you can get a chance. You know, and I think that's that's the most important thing um, about our program. I think you, you you can get an opportunity here. It's what you want as a PE teacher. You want that. Um, you want to see all the children grow, and some will grow and go and do sport in local clubs and for pupils like George, you hope, you know, there's it's quite a, a narrow window, isn't it, for there's just only so many pupils that can get to that level and for him to go and do that and step up to that next level, it's, it's why you teach, that's what you do, what you do to try and help pupils get to that level, so yeah, unbelievably proud. A brilliant young man and um, like I said, I hope that he's going to get more and more opportunities. But in terms of his future, that that that's for him. That that's his journey, and I'll yeah support him all the way. All the journeys, like back and forth to train, I just want to like, thank my mum and my dad for for doing all those journeys and like never giving up on me. So so yeah, it was a bit of a reward for them as well.